In today's video, we're going to talk about Selenium testing in Docker. So first, let me introduce Docker. Docker is a platform designed to make easier to create, deploy, and run applications using containers. Containers are these things that allow developers to package an application and its dependencies into a standardized unit for software development. And this can include everything needed to run the software. For example, the code, the runtime, the system tools, library, and etc. So here are some things that Docker allows you to do. So the first thing is that Docker allows a consistent testing environment. Docker ensures its consistency across environments by encapsulating the testing setup, dependencies, and configurations within containers. This consistency minimizes issues related to differences between development, staging, and production environments. Docker also allows for isolation and reproducibility. Each test can run within its own isolated container, ensuring that the test environment is reproducible and separate from the other test runs. This isolation prevents interference between tests and enhances reproducibility. Some other things that Docker allows is scalability. Docker enables easy scaling of test automation by allowing the quick deployment of containers. Tests can run in parallel across multiple containers, facilitating faster execution and enabling efficient use of resources. Docker is also easy to set up and configure. Docker simplifies the setup process for Selenium automation testing. With pre-built Docker images, containing Selenium and the browser configurations, setting up the testing environment becomes straightforward, reducing setup time and complexity. Docker also ensures resource efficiency. Docker containers have a minimal footprint and consume fewer resources compared to virtual machines. This efficiency allows for running multiple tests simultaneously on a single host without a significant overhead. Now, let me talk about some advantages of using Selenium testing in Docker. So the first thing is portability and reusability. Docker containers are portable, allowing the easy transfer of test environments across different machines or cloud services. This portability enhances the reusability of the testing environments, making it convenient for sharing among team members. The second is version control and image management. Docker provides version control for images enabling easy rollback to previous versions if needed. It also allows for the creation of custom images, providing flexibility to tailor this testing environment as required. Finally, integration with continuous integration pipelines. Dockerized Selenium tests integrate well with the CI-CD pipelines. The container-based approach allows seamless integration of tests into the build pipeline, automating test execution, and enabling faster feedback on code changes. So next, I will tell you uh, and give you a brief introduction on how you can install Docker on your own computer. The first thing you have to do is you have to go to this website. And once you get to this website, you can just download for your uh, computer. So I have uh, downloaded already, so you can just go ahead and download it and follow the link and the instructions. After that, what you can do is you can go to your command line. And the first thing you have to do in your command line is you have to pull the images. So what you should type is docker pull selenium dash standalone Chrome. And so this is for standalone Chrome. This is for Firefox and this is for Edge. And so you run all three of these lines. So standalone Chrome, standalone Firefox and standalone Edge. You can also run these as well, um, but you can just run this. After you pull the images, now you're going to start the standalone that we just pulled. And so you just run docker run, and then you uh, have some specifications on the port, uh, as well as the SHM size, and then the standalone that you want to run. So we have standalone Chrome here, but you can also use standalone Firefox or Edge. Now, the next thing you can do is you can pull some more images. And so docker pull, you can do a node Firefox debug, and you can get all the nodes for Firefox, Chrome, uh, and, uh, and then you have another Firefox and you have a hub. And after that, you can start your hub and your nodes. 
And so what you do is you use Docker network create grid, and this creates your hub node grid for Selenium. And after that, you can start your hub and node uh, using this command right here. And then using these commands below, you can connect your hubs with your nodes and you can go ahead and begin with your own Selenium project in Docker. So now I will show you the code implementation for Docker using C Sharp. And so I've already done all the pulling of the images and starting the standalone and nodes and hubs. So if you haven't done that already, go ahead and pause the video right now and follow the instructions previously to pull the different images and download the different standalones and hubs and nodes and start your own standalone. So after you've done that, uh, now I'm going to show you the Selenium C Sharp code that I have. So the first thing that's different about this project is that we have to use this dependency. So using openqa.selenium.remote. And other than that, really the only thing that differs using uh, Docker is the setup process. The different tests that we have is very similar to the, also, uh, to the other tests that we've done previously. So I'm really gonna focus on the setup method that we have right here. And so um, we see that there's a few of the same different uh, global variables out here. We have iWebDriver, which we had before, extends test, which we had before as well. And now we have a different thing, and this is grid URL, and this is something new. And so if we go to our setup right here, we see that we specify our grid URL to some local URL. And in this one, we have the port as 9999 for the standalone. The next thing we specify is the options right here. And we say that we're gonna use Chrome options. And after that, together, we're going to come to here and we're gonna specify a driver. And this time, instead of saying Chrome Web Driver, we use Remote Web Driver. And in the Remote Web Driver, the first parameter we have right here is grid URL. And this is what we specified up here, so the local host 9999. And then the second is the options, which is what we specified as Chrome options in the second line. And together, what this does is this creates a remote web driver using uh, at the web URL, so the, the port 9999, and then using Chrome options, so it uses Chrome. So after we finish that setup process, everything else pretty much remains very similar. So for example, in our search test right here, uh, we go to uh, the golf URL that we specified, and uh, what we'll do is it'll search for this golf course, and down here, it'll also select for other things inside the web page. So I'm just going to run one of these tests. So I'm going to go ahead and run search test here. So right click, and go ahead and run test right here. And we'll see what happens. So first, allow it to build. And we see that it's running golf standalone right here. So this is for a standalone. And it finishes running and it's successful. Now, if I close this right here, now I can show you something else. So now I'll show you how we can use Node and Basically what we have is we have two different nodes. So we have the Docker node for Chrome and Docker node for Firefox. First, let me show you Chrome and then Firefox. So again, right here, we use the uh, openqa.slam.remote right here. And then we specify the port that we're using, Chrome options, and then we use remote web driver to specify the web driver in the setup. Now, what this does is this basically sets up our hub at 4444. And I'll just show you what it looks like right there. So this is our hub, and we see that it's at 4444. And after that, basically, all the different nodes and stuff, they'll automatically connect to this hub because of how we specified when we started our Docker environment. And so now if you want to run the same test right here, you can go ahead and just right-click this, run test, and it's running the Chrome node right here. And if I open this, for example, we can see that there's a node running right here, but it's still running. It doesn't give any pop-ups this time. 
But if we look over here, we see that it's running. Uh, this node is running on our hub. And it finishes running that, so that's complete. Now, that's for Chrome. Now, if, let me show you Firefox. So Docker node Firefox. Everything's the exact same, except right here. We use new Firefox options as the web driver. So when we do remote web drivers and our options is Firefox options, this gives us um, our test in Firefox instead. And so if I go ahead and run this first method again, so it's running this method, uh, give it a sec, now it's running. So now if I go to Firefox right here, um, and I go to uh, right here, we see that there's a Firefox one that just started right now. And it's running in Firefox. And we see the previous one, it was running a node in Chrome. So we give it some time to run. And now we see that it's complete. And so yeah, this is just a very simple introduction on how you can uh, run using standalone, which we have here. Or you can use the node and hub architecture that we discussed previously. And um, so you can have nodes with Firefox, nodes with Chrome, and so on. And uh, you can run your own tests. Well, I hope this uh, video was helpful uh, in uh, introducing a little bit of Docker and how you can use Selenium testing with Docker. If you found this video helpful, please give this video a like and follow our, our channel. Uh, thank you for listening and we look forward to seeing you next time.